So for this project, I wanted to do something special for my parents, actually, and I know they love the work of Gauguin and Ray Crook, and I probably should have chosen a Ray Crook painting, but I really wanted to have a go at this Gauguin landscape because I thought it would look nice in the circular format. Now, I've already underpainted uh, the timber. It's the same timber as the other platters. It's a, a soft timber, but I already underpainted it with ultramarine blue, thalo blue, and a bit of white. And uh, so now I'm drawing on the lines. Now this is real time. Okay. So I just wanted to put this little bit of the, uh, the video in real time so you could see what I was doing. And of course you could draw on your shapes and lines in pencil or chalk. It doesn't have to be paint. I do like the commitment of going in with paint and seeing what's going to happen, knowing that that acrylic paint is so forgiving and you can do whatever you like once it's dry. You can paint over it anywhere. Uh, but yes, I was just deliberately looking at the reference photo uh, of this 1893 painting of the mountains in Tahiti by Gauguin, Paul G Gauguin, you probably know of him, uh, if, if nothing else, for having an argument with Van Gogh and, and Van Gogh subsequently cutting his ear off. Uh, here we go, <laughs> back to about eight times the speed is what I'm doing here. And I think now that you've seen the real time, you can see why I decided to speed it up. But I needed to get an idea of where things were. And I knew I could probably leave the sky blue uh, but I wasn't 100% sure. I was just going to play it by ear and start with the foreground. This also, uh, this little corner here, I decided to do at the real speed. This is 100% speed and I'm using my number 16 flat brush that we use in most of my club paintings. So I'm just filling it in there, putting plenty of paint on, although you will notice that I do a couple of coats uh, because yellow is a transparent colour generally, even though I'm adding a bit of white to it, it uh, is fairly see-through. You can see even doing those vertical marks, you can see the blue through it. And I wanted it to be interesting, but not necessarily uh, transparent in any way. Okay, let's go faster now. And I continue building up these areas. So the point is, I think when I'm copying this painting and and you learn so much by copying. It's really lovely to be able to do it for a reason. And yeah, I I, I wanted to build up the colours and learn as I went. See that little splash of yellow, of red? That was sort of from what I could see in the reference photo on the reference image. But uh, it's not paint by numbers. We're building things up. We're colour mixing. You're learning as you go. Here, blending a bit of green in there too, making it more interesting. And this means that in the future when I do a landscape of my own or any other subject, I might decide to throw a bit of a random colour or a different colour in the mix there and let it blend um, to make it more interesting. But here, oh, look, I have added brown to my palette I don't use the teal, uh, the teal that I've put on there, just as an aside. But I've ad added uh, burnt sienna and also a uh, black and a gold to my palette here. So I'm choosing all of these colors and mixing as I go. Not only am I looking at the actual color that I want to mix, but I'm looking at how it compares to the color next to it. So especially putting in that back mountain, you want it to be a darker tone than the mountain in front. And that's what the reference image is telling me. And that's what I decided to do. Okay. Now filling in these other jigsaw shapes with color is what I'm doing now. And of course I will be building up the color, but blocking in the color is, uh, it's a fun stage and you don't have to be perfect with it. Just enjoy getting the approximate colors onto your painting and look, oh, isn't it looking beautiful already? Um, there's a talented painter, a uh, bit of an impressionist there. So it is really lovely to see sort of how he was thinking by copying a painting in this way. There's little elements of dark there. When we get to the end, I'd ask you to think, if it didn't have those two black lines, would it be as balanced? And I'd say probably not. Now, Gauguin did paint this, this scene very often. So uh, there's a few versions of it that you can see when you research him or Google him, and some of them are looser than others. So it is really nice to know that he did it multiple times, and, and, and that means he can figure out his own sort of shorthand 
for interpreting the foliage, the um, the the pathways through the wheat or whatever the crop is there, and then the colours as you put them together. But they are such lovely bright colours. It still suited my shiny happy art um, idea of things, and it means that the learning that I am learning by doing this painting um, will be useful in the way that I paint generally day to day. So that's another reason I was very, very happy to choose this particular Gauguin painting. Now this animal, I'm not exactly sure what it is, maybe some sort of dog, um, but just using my smaller brush here, my number six um, round brush to put these small details in and then adding some more lines and details. Now I did take a photo, I stopped then and took a photo of my book which had the image in it so I could basically blow it up on my, on my phone screen. So hard not to want to sort of pinch or piece or touch your book, isn't it, sometimes and make things bigger when you're used to doing that on a screen. And I certainly wanted to do that here, but I took a photo of the picture in the book and then made it larger to make it work. Now I'm continuing to work along um, the image from left to right, adding these extra details, these palm trees, making sure my shapes are closer to right. And here I'm adding the figure of course. Now it's not a simply drawn figure. It is um, It is best to look at it as shapes and you'll notice that I will also come back and lighten that background purple around him so that there's more of a tonal variation than there is now. I had to bring the path up to meet him. You can see how easy it is really to change things uh, as you come up to them. Now I'm adding some brown into those fields as well. It just, it doesn't have to be finished, okay? I think the more you look at a piece, the more time you spend on a piece. And this piece, I'd spend about two hours, considering that was copying. That's um, a good chunk of time working from, yeah, working pretty consistently. So you'll see a certain amount at first pass, but it's very likely that if you spend more time with a painting or any sort of reference image, you will see more the longer you spend because your eyes are discovering more and it's either tonal differences between sections of the painting or it could be actual subject matter that you might not have noticed the first time you looked at it. There's so many things to see and that's why studying art, studying art made by other people is a lovely thing to do and you will learn so much because then you'll be able to study your own work more easily and that will make you a better artist. So I'm adding some more details now to the man, the figure itself, and it's time to do some skies in just a sec, but we'll get these, these palm trees on. Look, I could have waited to the end to add those palm trees, seeing they were going to the sky as well, but um, you've got to make a choice, haven't you? And there's no wrong choices. You just might do things differently next time, but Yes, I was still filling in these details with my number six round brush, my smallest brush that I use, um, and basically working my way across the reference image. Um, I turn my plate knowing that um, I, dry, I draw lines better from left to right. Being right-handed seems to come naturally to me. So if you were left-handed, you might choose to turn your page the other way or turn your image the other way. Now it's time to mark those clouds on. You can see there's a slight glow behind the mountain, so I've added that in and a bit of white. But the clouds themselves aren't bright white, so I've used a bit of yellow and yellow ochre in the mix and using the corner of the brush to get in there. But you can see I've dropped down to a smaller brush, number 10 flat I think I'm using at the moment, um, just to get in there. But it once again needs a few layers of paint to be opaque. And that's certainly what I wanted. Then I decided the sky wasn't the right colour, so I mixed some phthalo blue with white and started marking it in. And can you see the difference that makes? It really does bring it to life, doesn't it? Having that lighter tone in the sky than what was originally there. Um, that's also because the, that first layer was really sucked in by the, the timber that I was painting on, and, and that dulls your colour a bit. So by putting a layer of gesso or at least paint, 
between your canvas, your substrate, and then um, the painting itself, um, you can hang on to brighter, cleaner colours much more easily. Now I'm rebuilding those palm trees. Now I've drawn them once and that was not wasted time. You sort of get to know the image so much better as I've already mentioned. So happy, yeah, more than happy to sketch them again and add those little bits of extra colour as I go through. So it was really working my way from left to right again, making sure I've included everything and am I happy with it. Deepening some tones there in the pathway. And now I'm using my small number 10 uh, flat brush to do the gold around the corner, around the edge of the bowl. Okay, it's a golden brand, golden irides iridescent gold fine, I think it is. And it's such a lovely, lovely, lovely colour. So treat yourself if you are the artist and if you're watching, you have a friend who's an artist. I think it's a terrific gift. Uh, it will last a long time, but uh, it's such a, a beautiful quality of gold paint, so please do check it out. It's as opaque as it can be, but I will come back and do a second coat to make sure that it's as opaque as I want it to be. Okay, just finishing off the board there. There we go. Right around the top. Okay, now once again, still touching up with some lighter tones. There's fields in the front, that tree or that mountain or whatever that is at the right hand side. Adding some of that yellow to the palm trees too. And still working on getting that green right. Sometimes green can be too blue, and that's often when the the green is made with the low blue. So do keep an eye on that and add more yellow. Adding more yellow again there. So there's so much blending, and obviously the original to this is about a metre square, I think. So I'm doing it a lot smaller, so we had more room for more details. Um, but about this stage, I think I started painting it for myself. So admittedly, it's almost finished, but I know now, especially, that I had to do what I feel is right for the painting. Okay, so there comes a time that the reference gets put aside unless you're doing an exact, exact, exact replica and it has to stand alone as an artwork on its own. And certainly having that painting right there means that I am definitely referring to it, but now I'm looking at the painting in front of me thinking, hmm, okay, that man needs to be lighter uh, and, and following it through. Now it's like, what colour do I sign my name? I've decided to go with the olive green. This is back to normal speed. So very carefully doing A and N, A uh, to wrap this one up. But I painted for approximately two hours here to get this painting done. Of course, starting with my usual palette of colours. But um, the time gets away from me, doesn't it? And before you know it, two hours is done. But I was really, really happy with the end result of this platter. I went, I went on and varnished the inside and the edge of the entire platter once the paint was dry. Probably did it about four times to make sure it was shiny enough and consistent enough. And I'm really, really happy that I did because I'm shiny happy art and I really like shiny. Okay, it's just still adding a few extra colours as we're going through. And here I am lightening the, the purple behind the man's head. I felt that he wasn't standing out enough and it's all possible it is all possible so don't feel restricted in any way okay and that's it for this particular project and I'm pleased to say they loved it <laughs>